and in this video we're going to be taking a look at processing production orders within DIA systems. Now by this point you should have watched some of our previous videos which go through the setup of the advanced manufacturing module such as bills and materials and also any peripheral scenarios such as co-manufacturing or maybe even make to order farm. Today, specifically, we're going to be looking at all the different options and how you can actually process them bombs to produce a finished product. So, first of all, we're going to be taking a look at manual production orders. If you want to look at some of the other techniques for creating production orders, such as smart reordering or the MRP module, then please refer to those videos first and then come back to this one. So, to create a new production order within DEER, you'll want to head to Production and select New Production Order. Once you've selected that, you'll then be presented with the production order screen. And the first thing that you'll want to do is start filling out the mandatory fields marked by the star asterisks. Firstly, we'll want to enter in our SKU for the products that we wish to create. So, as all, all of our previous videos, we're going to be creating our vanilla ice cream one litre tub. So I've just typed in the name there. Alternatively, you can select this little arrow and select from a drop-down menu. Selecting the SKU or the product name will, will pull over all the full product details. Next, you'll want to enter in your quantity. If you've used any of the automatic um, functions such as MRP and Smart Reordering, you won't need to worry as much about that. In this case, we've just entered in our own. You'll then want to select your shop floor and also just check your finish and work in progress accounts are correct. Next, we can then move on to capacity calculation. So this is an interesting point to stop on. So capacity calculation takes into account quite a lot of different things. First of all, it takes into account resource capacity. It takes in cycle duration that you've set up in your production bomb. It takes into account resource time required. So again, from your production bomb, and it also takes into account operations taking part in sequential days. So it won't try to schedule things in where there's huge gaps in between. It will look at component lead time. And if you've selected ignore cumulative lead time, it will look at your production lead time you've assigned against your bill of materials. Before we determine our capacity calculation, it's worth pointing out there are four stages of production in DIA. We have stage one, which is planning. Planning is where components and resources are checked and allocated. Once the order is authorised, that then confirms the resource availability. Stage two is release. Now, this is where components are allocated. And if transfer, transfer or procurement are set to automatic, those supply orders are generated. We have stage three, which is work in progress, where the job is split into runs. And stage four, which is the output and of the finished items itself. So the reason I mentioned those is because this capacity calculation allows us to allocate dates to the first two stages, which are planned and released. So first of all, we have two settings to choose from. We have from plan date forward or we have from plan required by date backwards. From plan date forward allows us to assign a date from when we wish to first start this job and plan the job forward from that point. Required by date backward allows us to assign a date when which we need this item for or a customer's required by date and plan the job backwards from that. You can see that these two columns here, planned and released, do have their own descriptions. Essentially, it's very similar to what I just explained there. Planned is when replenishment orders should be created to complete the production order on time. And release date is when components and resources are available to start and they should be started. So to get these dates calculated for you, you can put them in yourself and you can take over this um, completely manually or you can select the capacity calculation you wish to use, assign a required by date because I'm using required by date backwards, and click this refresh button here, which will then assign a plan date. So D has now told me, based on all them um, parameters I explained earlier, that 
the plan date of the 25th of February is when we need to create all our replenishment orders to get all the stock in on time. And also on the 25th of February is when we need to get ready to start production because the lead time must only be, or it must be under a day here. Once we've completed that, the only final thing to point out here is this maximum quantity field, which can be pretty useful if you're making to stock. If you go ahead and select that refresh button, Deer will look at all the components you've got in stock and tell you how many you can actually make based on what you've got on hand. In my case, I haven't got any of the components, so it is actually zero. Scrolling down, we can then select our version if you're using different versions of bills of materials. And now we can select load bill of materials, which will load our production bond based on the SKU or name we've selected at the top. Anything marked as blue means we're OK. We've got everything we need there for it or um, capacity is OK. Anything marked as red means that we need to either fix something or we need to purchase that item. In my case, everything that's marked in red is a component demonstrating to me that I need to purchase these items in order to complete that job. We'll get to that in just a second. So to move this job forward, all we need to do now is go ahead and select Authorize. Authorize will move, it, move us into the first stage of production, which is planning. And at this point, authorizing the order confirms the resource availability and therefore will be deducted from our capacity planner. We're now in the planning stage, which we can see highlighted at the top of the screen here. And at this point, you still can go to the production scheduler and move this job around should you need to. Once we select release, this is the point when components are soft allocated. So they'll be deducted from your available quantity. And if you're using the automatic procurement or transfer, you will see those supply orders be generated. So if I select release now, because I am using automatic procurement, Deer will produce a purchase order for me to go ahead and purchase those required components highlighted in red. So now we're in the release stage as highlighted here, we now can view all the visible tabs. The order page demonstrates everything we're producing in this production order, such as the components required, the stages, all of our parameters that we previously configured in our production bill of materials. Delivery 2 states where it's going to be output to when it's finished. Transactions demonstrates any financial movements that have been involved to this point. None should be at this point because we haven't produced anything. Logs and attributes is all the stages this order has been through. Attachments is where you can upload any documents if you need to view them during the process. And related orders, which I can't emphasize enough on, is a really useful tool and you should use when processing jobs because it essentially consolidates all the points or supply orders that you need to refer to. So in my case, I can quickly access the purchase order that DIA has created for me. If you're using sub-assemblies or assembly bills and materials or sub-production bills and materials, those will all be consolidated here so you can quickly access them and navigate between the different jobs. Because processing a production bond isn't an easy process and you might have multiple things going on at once, so this related order tab is really, really useful. So now that we've explained them, I actually need to go and purchase these components so that we can move on with actually processing this production order. So what I can do now is select this purchase order like so. I can select the arrow to um, view all the available, all the components that are on this purchase order. I can select this purchase order and quickly process this on the screen now. I'm not going to go through the final details of purchase orders because if you by now you should already know that. If not, we, we may have some videos shortly on processing things like sales and purchases. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly authorise this purchase order, authorise the stock receipt. I'm going to allow DIA to automatically generate serial numbers for me. And I'm just going to manually assign my expiry date because I'm using FIFO traceability. From here, I can then go ahead and select authorise. And now we can go back to our production order, select the refresh button, and you'll see the status is now received. 
And if we head back to the order page, everything should be in red for uh, blue for us. Sorry. So now that we've done that, we're now ready almost to move on to the third stage of production, which is work in progress. To do that, we need to create production runs and production runs are how Dia splits up production orders into essentially runs of that job. So we can select production run here, Dia, and then we can select the plus button and Dia will let us know how many we actually need to produce. You can go ahead and enter the full quantity or you can do this in multiple stages if you like and you can create as many productions as you like and you can split up that quantity. So we have 500 to produce. If we want to complete these in two batches, we can like so. Think of runs almost like batch runs or batches of production. We're just going to go ahead and do the one for today. And then we can go ahead and select run. Once we've done that, you'll then see it's now created a tab for us called production run. We can select this production run and now we, we are now able to view the production run screen. You do also have some sub tabs on here. So the production run shows you all the individual runs, which we'll explain in a second. Output is where we put away our items. Manual journals isn't yet available because we, we need to have actually completed some of the production runs. Financials shows you any transactions that have been generated to this point. Reservation is where you can see any reserved components that you've had assigned to this job. And then finally, batch and serial tra traceability, where you can map any raw materials to the finished item of the batch or serial numbers used. This option is only visible if you have product tracing turned on, which we looked at in one of our previous production settings videos. On the run itself, it separates all of our steps of our operation on the left hand side. So we have four steps of our operation. We have the machine setup, blending, flavoring and inspection. We can complete these one by one or depending on how you set up your bill of materials, you may be able to complete multiple of these at each time. We can see our quantity produce. We can see our work in progress and we can see what is required for this individual step. So from here, you can choose to print out a pick list, which will just display the components and resources on that job. Or you can scroll to the top of the screen and print out a production order traveler or a production order sheet, which will show the entire job. So at this point, it's for, your, for you or your business to make a decision. Are you going to be printing out sheets, handing those out to the team? They're going to be filling the their component usage and resource time on sheets and then handing them back and you'll be updating them following the operation or are your workers going to have access to this screen and be completing it one by one. I'm going to go through the process as if um, we've handed out the sheets and they've, they've given us all their usage and times after the fact but if the workers are using this it's a very similar process but you would just be completing it one by one. So to start the, the production run, we just need to click start here. Clicking start will then enable us to view suspend or complete. So we can suspend this operation should we need to. We can then fill out our qu actual quantity for our component usage, as you can see here. So we can see if we've got any notes and we can see the components and we can also see the actual type of operation this is. So we need to use one unit one item of cleaning solution we can either update this quantity manually like so or you can select auto consume and dia will do that for you once this stage is complete all you then need to do is click complete and that will be marked as completed and you can move to the next stage of production this this step is more of a manufacturing one so again you can see here step two is our blending. It's going to take us four hours. It's at work center kitting and we're going to use these components and this is actually going to output some vanilla ice cream base mix which is going to be used as an input on our next step. If you're not sure what inputs and outputs are, again, please refer to our production run video where we go through those and actually create this bill of materials. So again, we've printed out our job sheets, we've handed them to the guys, they've updated us with their um, completed details. We can go ahead and click start. If you were doing this on an operational buy basis, they would just be clicking start, updating their components and then completing it. 
Again, we have our option to update the quantities manually, like so. If you do update them manually, make sure to select the batch number from the drop down, as you can see here. Otherwise, it will be marked red, as you can see there. So you can go through and update all of those manually, like I'm doing now. Or you can just simply, as we did on the previous screen, click auto consume and Deer will pick those on a FIFO or FIFO basis for you. Once that's completed, we can click complete. And because we have an output, we then need to complete the output and say what has actually been produced. So it's a vanilla ice cream base mix, 500 litres to be stored in main warehouse bin one to be used in our next operation. So we can go ahead and click complete. If you're seeing that and you're not seeing the same thing in your bill of materials, don't worry, you might just not be using inputs or outputs. On the flavouring stage, we are now inputting our vanilla ice cream base mix from our previous step, adding some vanilla flavouring and mixing those together. So again, we can go ahead and click start. Fill out our details or we can select auto consume and click complete. The only point that I haven't mentioned so far is that once you click complete on each of these operations, you are actually able to go and update the actual time. So you can see we've got plan time and we've got actual time. So I can update these to, to meet and be in line with what the workers have told us has been done. like so. Final stage now, which is our inspection. So this is just quality control. This is an internal operation more than anything. And all we're doing here is actually just starting and completing because we're not consuming any components. Once we go ahead and click complete, we'll then be presented with our output because this is the final stage of the operation and we need to now say what, we're actually, what we've produced and what we're putting away. So we can see we've got our finished product, our vanilla ice cream base mix, and we need to tell the system what our batch serial number is. We can manually type that in like so, or you can select auto generate batch and serial and Deer will produce one for you. We can assign expiry date because again, we're using FIFO traceability and we can also determine a location should we wish. From here, you can then click complete and it will take you to the output screen where we can assign an effective date to that output. One final point to point out before we do that is actually visit the batch and serial traceability column here and just double check all the correct raw materials are mapped to the finished item. Again, this is only visible if you have product tracing turned on. We can go back to our output, assign an effective date, which is today. We can double check everything is correct. And then we can print out a receiving note should we need to and we can go ahead and complete this production order. You can see changes have now saved successfully and this job has now been marked as completed and it will be in stock available for sale or for us to use in a potential further production job. So this logic can be applied to finished items, sub-assemblies or, or even make to order bills and materials as well because it is the exact same process. So hopefully this is useful. If anything didn't feel familiar, please refer to our, some of our other videos first before watching this one on how to produce production orders. Thank you.